Let's take a look at one of the most favored works by the great 18th century playwright, Pierre Collot de Chamblain de Moreau, The Game of Love and Chance, or as it's known in French, Le Jeu de l'Amour et du Hasard. This comedy of manners was first performed at the Théâtre Italien in 1730. Before we get into the production itself, let's kind of go over some of the historical background. Firstly, France in the 1700s is still influenced by the Sun King, Louis XIV, and his life of excellence and his love for the arts and sciences, as well as the Académie Française is still in place to uphold the French literature and its status. During the 30s, however, Louis XV reigns, and with him comes the opulence and grandeur of the pre-revolution France aristocracy. French society is split into three estates, the clergy, the nobility, and the bourgeoisie, with the bourgeoisie making up roughly 96% of that population. There is a clear distinguishment between the nobility and this rising middle class, with the nobility taking any opportunity they can to flaunt their wealth personally in their extravagant dress and outlandish hair, while often putting down the lower classes. With that clear separation, the tensions between the classes eventually become the revolution that we know today. And seeing as these two don't really like each other, it's not a surprise they didn't mingle often. Except in the theater. <laughs> During the 1700s, there were three main French theaters. Théâtre Français, Théâtre Italien, and Théâtre de la Foi. Using the lightness and the freedom of the Rococo period, these theaters brought people from all classes together, particularly the bourgeoisie, for a light-hearted entertainment that was not actively trying to push political ideas, but rather trying to control the ideas as to not bring about the revolution that would eventually come. Getting back to the production of The Game of Love and Chance, as I said before, this comedy was first performed in 1730 at the Theatre Italien. This theatre was made up of the Commedia dell'arte group originally employed by the Medici family, and they performed in l'Hôtel Bourgogne. The Commedia style was highly influential on this piece and Moreau in general. The overall plot even follows a stock plot that Commedia often used of two lovers coming together in an absurd way often aided by their two servants. The servants themselves are also stock characters pulled from Commedia, particularly Harlequin and Lisette, Lisette being a feisty servant. This work, like many other by Marvaux, puts love, particularly surprise love, at the forefront, but he also uses themes and motifs such as love over reason, use of disguise, and the examination of class differences. The Game of Love and Chance uses this comedy of errors between the disguised classes to poke fun at the nobility and the aristocracy of the time. This performance would have been based in the Rococo period and with the realism of the time. It would follow what people would have seen in their everyday life. Large ornamentation of dresses with paniers and men in full habitat la française would have been the typical costumes that you would have seen. However, there also could have been the use of masks. The Comedia used masks as an easy way of characterizing their characters so that they could focus on the physical comedy and the farce in their action. And for this piece, it could have been an excellent way to transform the characters as they disguise themselves as their servants and their masters. The Game of Love and Chance is one of Moreau's most famous works and is actually still continually produced today. However, there hasn't been a direct film adaptation of the work, but instead there was a 2004 film titled Le Ski, which uses the play as a center point for a high school drama. Looking at these different production photos, you can clearly see that there's a great variation to be had when doing a production of this show. It can be a more period, it can be more modern. There is a great flexibility in this loosely action comedy that will allow you to play with scenic costuming, lighting, sound, every aspect of design to make it your own and make it a unique production. However, it should be noted that some do overdo the physical action and create that as a focal point of the comedy instead of the language used. Marvel actually uses a style called marivotage, which in essence allows the audience to understand the inner feelings of the character through their witty dialogue. There's a lot of wit, and at the heart of this work, it is about two lovers trying to decipher their own feelings and figure out what they love and want, and the production should reflect that. I hope this was a helpful and somewhat entertaining look at the world and history and the production aspects of Marvel's The Game of Love and Chance. Thank you, and break a leg.